Hi boys and girls, welcome back to Children's Church Online. You all know some strong people, right? But do you know who is the strongest? God is the strongest of all. Today we're going to learn from the Bible about how God gives us armor. You might say some tools that he gives us to make us strong too. And being friends with God makes us stronger because he puts his strength in us. Today, we're going to find out that God is strong and we're strong in him. The Bible tells us to put on God's armor so we can stand strong against God's enemy. Armor is what a warrior or a soldier would wear. He wears a helmet and he uses a shield. The armor protects the warrior from someone who wants to hurt him. Like that, God's armor protects us from God's enemy. So let's put on our armor and see what the Bible tells us that it is. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to be reading from my Bible today to teach us about God's armor. And this is in Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 14. This is what it says. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. So the first thing the Bible tells us to do is to put on our belt of truth. Now you all know what a belt is, right? Here's a picture. So pretend that you have a belt. You're going to put it around your waist and click it maybe right here or buckle it or tie it however you want your belt to be. You have your belt on? Okay. So this is a belt of truth. Here's what that means. That means that we make a choice to be honest, to tell the truth. We don't lie. Why do you think God wants us to tell the truth? Did you say to protect us from the enemy? If you did, you were right. It also helps us to stay close to God. So let's keep putting on our armor. The Bible also said to put on our body armor of God's righteousness. So here's the next piece of our armor. So you have on your belt of truth, right? You have your belt, check, good. And now we have a body armor of God's righteousness. So this would kind of be like putting on a vest. So you could put your arm this way and this way and you would hook it on, okay? It would be like a, a thing that would cover your whole front and back. So there you have the body armor of God's righteousness. Putting on the body armor of God's righteousness means we want to do the right thing. We make a choice not to do the wrong thing. So making good choices. Let's see what the Bible says is next. This is Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Did you hear a word in there that kind of gave us a clue to what the next piece was? Mm-hmm. All right, let's review. We've got our belt of truth on. Click, click. Got it on? Good. Now you've got your body of armor. Remember, this reminds us to make good choices. And now we're going to have shoes. Shoes of peace. So this is what a warrior might wear for shoes. So put your shoes on. Check. When we remember that God is the strongest, we don't have to worry. He'll take care of us. Let's see what comes next. Verse 16 says, In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which with, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So let's go back and review. We've got our belt, right? Our belt of truth. It reminds us to be honest, no telling lies. Then we've got our body armor of righteousness. Put that on. Remember, make good choices. Now we've got shoes. Did you slide your feet into your shoes? Those are our shoes of peace that remind us 
don't worry, God will be with you. And now we have a shield, a shield of faith. When we hold up our shields of faith, we believe in God no matter what. Now I think there's another piece of armor. If we look at verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So hopefully you've got this down by now. Review with me. We've got our belt of, belt of truth. Check. No telling lies, right? We have our body armor of righteousness. Check. We have our shoes of peace. No worrying. And we have our shield of faith. Hold up your shield, right? Losing my spot here. And now we have our helmet of salvation. So if you were a warrior, you would put your helmet down over your head and your face as a shield to cover your entire head, right? Got it? All right. This is what Jesus helps us be friends with God. And that can never be taken away. That's what salvation is. And God's enemy can never take it away either. Now, there was one more piece of armor that was in that last verse that I read to you. Did you catch it? We read it together. It said, take the sword of the spirit. Now, this weapon is a pretty important piece of the warrior's outfit, right? And this represents the word of God, right? The Bible. So, I think we have all our armor. Let's go back and review. See if you can remember what each of these mean. First, we put on a belt. Do you remember what the belt was for? That's right, the truth. No telling lies. Then, we had our body of armor. Do you remember what this one represents? Righteousness, yes, making good choices, not listening to the enemy. Then came our shoes. Our shoes of, you remember? That's right, peace. Don't worry, God is with you. Then next came our shield. Do you remember what the shield represents? It's our shield of faith. Next, our helmet. Our helmet reminds us of our salvation, right? And finally, we have our sword of the spirit. And our sword of the spirit, boys and girls, is like the Bible. It is God's word, his promise to us. Now God's enemy wants us to believe lies, but the Bible reminds us that God is strong and he loves us so much. And the Bible says we can talk to God anytime and he'll help us be strong in him. So I have an object lesson for us to see how strong you are. For this particular activity, you're going to need just an ordinary piece of paper. Now, if I have an ordinary piece of paper and I want to tear it in half, I don't need to be very strong, do I? Do you think I can do that pretty easily? Let's try it. Oh, simple, right? That wasn't difficult at all. That was easy. But did you know that there's a way for us to make that same piece of paper super strong? Let me show you. Again, just one ordinary piece of paper, nothing special about the paper. But this time, we're going to do some folding. First, we're going to fold it in half. That's one fold. Then we're gonna fold it in half again. 
and it doesn't even have to be perfect. Just do the best you can. Okay, two folds. Can you fold it in half again? I think so. Three folds. Let's try one more fold. So how many folds is that? Did you say four? If you did, you're right. Okay, so that same piece of paper, but this time it's folded in half four times. Folding the paper makes it really strong. So strong that we probably can't tear it anymore. Try. It's just not gonna rip. It's just not going to. This reminds me of God's armor that we le just learned about, how God's armor makes us strong. Do you remember all those pieces again? Your belt of truth, your armor of righteousness, your shoes of peace, and the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Those are what make us strong. God is strong. And when we feel weak, God is strong and his armor will protect us. You'll have to let me know how strong you were with tearing your paper. To end our lesson today, we're going to make a craft. And I'll show you what mine looks like and what you need at home to make your own. You may recall that the last piece of our armor that we learned about today was a sword, right? So we're going to make a sword to remind us. And if you remember, the sword is what represents God's word, okay? That's a very important part of our armor of God. And on mine, I wrote, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, Ephesians 6.10. That was a good verse for today's lesson. So let me show you how you can make your own sword at home that will look something like this. Here's the things you'll need. Some cardboard. Our family had pizza this week, so I took this out of our recycling bin to use. You can use cardboard, but I also think that paperboard would work. So if your family eats um, granola bars or cereal or a box like that that's not quite as heavy as cardboard, I think it would work just fine. You will also need some aluminum foil, some scissors, and a marker. I would also recommend that a grown-up help with this project today because cutting cardboard can be a little tricky and safety scissors probably weren't, won't work so well. And also, if you choose to write the Bible verse on the sword, you're probably going to need a permanent marker, which would always which should always have the supervision of a grown-up. So if you wanna go gather up your supplies, I will show you how to make your own Sword of the Spirit. All right, now you can see from the sword that I made at home that I still have the outline here on the side, and you can decide exactly how you want your sword to look. You can make a short, fat sword. You can make a tall, skinny sword. It doesn't really matter. I made mine pointed. You could make yours rounded. But you're just going to draw, I did a point like that, almost kind of like a diamond, like this. And then, to make the handle, I did almost like a smiley face, like this. And then, just the part that you would hold on to at the bottom. I guess this sword's a little smaller than my first sword. It doesn't matter. Once you've decided, and if you mess up, you can just redraw over it because remember, boys and girls, you're just gonna cut this out and the whole thing is going to get cut, covered with aluminum foil. So if there's any marks that don't look particularly nice, it doesn't matter because it's all gonna get covered up anyway. So you'll cut him out. And this is where I think a grown-up would be super helpful because cardboard is a little tricky. You have to be strong <laughs> to cut cardboard. All 
and I don't think that safety scissors will be strong enough to cut through, at least not very easily. Okay, just about have it. One more little cut here. There we go. And then you can just recycle what's left over there. And then you'll get your aluminum foil. And when I did mine, I cut a piece in half just to give me a smaller piece to work with at a time. And I started at the top just because it felt the easiest. And you're just literally going to wrap that aluminum. The nice thing about aluminum foil is that it bends. And you can even, if you have some extra on the back, trim that off. It bends and folds real nicely to fit. You can make yours look real smooth and nice, or you can crinkle it up first before you put it on there if you want to give it some textured look to it. Oops, I'll just, let's see here. Cover the handle. Aluminum foil is pretty easy to work with. You can't really mess it up. You just keep bending and folding. Looks like I've got plenty here to make him nice and shiny. There. So now I've got my shiny sword. And then if you want to, it's up to you, take a Sharpie or some other permanent marker. And the verse that I chose to write was, be strong, because that's what we were learning about today, in the Lord, and in his mighty power. And then you have a nice little keepsake to remember today's lesson. You could even use it as a bookmark in your Bible if you wanted to. Right? God is strong and we're strong in him. One of the tools he gives us is to stand strong in the Bible. The Bible is full of words we can use to fight the enemy. And when we know God's word, we're ready for battle. Take your sword, Bible strong in the Lord and in the power of his word. We'll see you next week.